Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recording the progress. Hello. Hello, Chang. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I was running upstairs. I, I didn't. It was six o'clock. I uh, I I somehow had it in my head that it was ten o'clock, and not um, nine o'clock. And I'm glad. Literally, I'm I'm in Ottawa helping my son just kind of get settled after Christmas break. So we just came back from grocery shopping, and I just looked at my phone and went, "Huh? Oh, I need to go." <laughs> I'm well, making it, pasta, you know. right? I'm making yeah. supper, and I'm thinking, "Oh, what time's huh. the podcast tonight?" Because I got to be yeah. doing stirring, and then I run and take a look. I thought, "Ah, oh, oh, I guess I got to go." Mm. Okay, and young man, you're on mute. Yeah, I know. I just wanted you guys to, you know, catch up, and then I was going to jump. Oh, in. just no jump worries, in. Don't no wait, wait for us to catch up in here yeah. for an hour and a half. How yeah, are you? To... I'm good, man. I, I mean, thanks for having me. It's kind of surreal that um, I'm on this because I've been a listener for the past, like, I don't know, six, seven months. So really, seriously, wow, wow. Thank you for I, listening. Don't know if I feel bad for you or if I should we, congratulate uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I oh, thank you. It. So down to earth. It's just so it's so informal, which is like. Well, it's, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, we, we do our best. We do our best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we yeah. do our best to be us, right? Yeah. That's, this, this How... is pretty much what you get, right? 24-7. It's not much. This is it's, it. It's kind of cool. So um, if you'll indulge me, like, how, how did you how did you find us, the podcast? We're always curious about how people find us and then, and then you know, what's kind of uh, useful or interesting and then what we can do better. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm connected to a lot of people in the CPG industry now. Right. I follow a lot of people as well. So, you know, when someone likes, I think I found you guys, I'm pretty sure via someone in my network liking one of your episodes that you launched. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Advertise. Yeah. I mean, that's how yeah. I find most of my stuff is through like people's likes on LinkedIn. Right. Mm-hmm. right. That that's makes how sense. I do mine too, right? I find yeah. someone, a friend likes it. You think, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah it's a like cool. audience, right? Like if you found value in it, I probably will too. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Also, there's not a lot of CPG Canadian focused podcasts out there. So like I jump, like, I mean, I've been almost none, the, actually. Almost none. Yeah. There's you yeah. guys, there's uh Green Fresh. Mm-hmm. Um might be it. That's it. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. 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 That's okay, fantastic. well, don't tell anybody. We don't want any more space. We don't want anybody in this space. <laughs> we could just own this little yeah, there, space. There are too many people. Nobody Way else many... jump in with a podcast. Yeah, nobody um, should do it. We would we would love if you introduced yourself, kind of told us a little bit, and then you uh, you've been listening, so so you kind of know our format. We'd we'd love to kind of hear about where you've been and and uh, what you're working on now. Um, it'd be fantastic. For sure, I'm. I feel like I'm such a small Joe compared to the rest of the guests, but you nope. know, I, success I is success, man. That's that's the beauty of that's, it. That's think, the beauty of it. For sure, I, I think it's just like more of like a, I'm humbled by this. So, anyways. <laughs> enough of the enough of them uh, mush mush i'll get to it um yeah i mean like i i mean where to start i guess like you know i'm i've worked so i'm currently i'm a strategy consultant for the government okay um i have a newborn well not a newborn anymore actually he's seven months my first child so been still judging, fresh still fresh yeah. wait wait tell everyone your name we haven't even done that part yet oh, yeah my name is sasha hey guys very cool and, and we don't know Sasha, just in case the listeners are Sasha reached out to me or you, Phil? You. Me on LinkedIn and yeah. just like the podcast. Um, I can't remember if you told me what you were doing. I took a look at it. I said to the Phil, I said, you should have him on. It's kind of cool. He's got a new product. He's yeah. trying. You know, let's let's see if he wants to come on. And you were graciously accepted, which was very nice. So thank you. I appreciate it. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, I think I think one of the cool things is like is that you guys bring on folks, and then you're like, you know, let's reconnect in four months. And in four months, I can tell you that um, I'll have distribution. I have a broker team set up. So like, you know, it's, I think a lot's going to happen in the next four months. But so I go mean, back to the beginning, though. What do you? Who are you? What you're doing? So, why you're doing it? Where so are you at? And I'd love to get you're it. You're Sasha Rajamani, if I got that yeah. right, right? Mm-hmm. And and you run Umi Brands. Yeah, Umi's right. my mom's name's Uma, and she's like she she's always fed me. So, okay, and she will do that for the rest of her life and yours. I mean, she like, yeah, phenomenal cook. Anyways, like I, awesome. devo- I devoted this to her. I mean, the brand company, but um, the the product's called Poco, and it's a family recipe that's been in our family for years or generations. It's um a rice and chickpea based chip with an infused spice mix, which is proprietary, which I okay, did, which I did through trial and error. Um, it looks like a Frito. 
but yeah, it does. It yeah. Pays hundred times better. Uh, cool. Poco is P O K K O. In case anyone, uh, I do this a lot on on podcasts. I I start like looking and trolling. Um, so if you're gonna look for it, um, while Sasha's talking, it's P O K K O, Poco, and it really does look. Yeah, yeah. yeah we should have we should have got the sample sent then. I like that. I like I like snack foods like that. Yeah, I had samples. I mean, yeah, I know. I I mean, all I mean, happy to send you guys. It's, Don't worry about it. I just love we're, it. we're I, dumb like that. Like halfway through the show, I'll be buying them. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just waiting for it to hit the hit the superstore down the street. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I mean, okay, so so you're the you're the founder of uh, Umi Brands and um, and Poco. What uh, were kind of give us a sense of like so so you you currently work for the government um and then this this recipe and and how you got here maybe tell us a little bit about that and, and then you're a bit about your background as well yeah. for sure i brought so i started bringing it casually to work in 2019 um colleagues were interested in it so um eventually you know there was enough of a customer base so i started sell, selling them in ziploc bags and then COVID hit and then um i relaunched this back in i mean i like you know reignited the the fire was reignited back in 2021, early January. And then I got like, I was like, you know what, let's see how this does in a soft launch, an experiment run. So March, 2021, I started working at a com commercial kitchen, um, packaged, labeled, all that stuff myself. Um, family and friends started buying it. Then friends of friends, family, friends of friends, three and four degrees of separation. I did a five month trial, um, experimented at a, brewery in the West End in Toronto, sold it five times, fastest selling snack to date, got some leads and like catering companies started ordering through, sorry, I got like some interested catering companies. Um, I got Scotiabank Arena, wanted to bring it for like major league flights, which is cool. Um, a Hollywood actor who was a regular at, his, at this brewery reached out. His assistant was like, this guy's a major TV show. Like I actually watch a show and he's like, yeah, Harvey's like a huge fan. He bought all your snack at the brewery. He, so I brought some down to the uh, studios for them and they said that Harvey ended up eating it all, um, which is hilarious. But yeah, it, you know, this kind of led just putting myself out there and just doing a quick trial run and seeing how it went. Um, there was that, there was some, like there was, you know, some immediate success and I got some uh, family to back me up and now I'm just trying to scale. So you, um, I got to fill in some blanks here because yeah. I'm, I'm looking at like, so your LinkedIn, for example, you have you have some major government experience right economist at the at at budget and treasury ministry of uh ontario ministry of finance you you've got a business consultant corporate services division you've got um you know you you kind of like senior business consultant in a bunch of places um where where does this come from? Like that, you know, like your, your skills, I guess you've, you've got some of the consulting skills that help you fill in some of the gaps. Right. But where does the, <laughs> it doesn't really lend to I'm, it. I'm, I'm going to make I'm, myself a snack and a, um, yeah. like I'm yeah. sitting in the government office as a, as a government worker. And the, the logical thing is to make a snack and start during yeah, the pandemic. Know, I mean, what you guys don't, so I, I did four, yeah. I worked at four years at Loblaws. I was always interested in okay. product. I was, I was okay. Walking around. okay. Yeah. So that unless you came from the industry. Okay. I, yeah. At least okay. that, that makes fills a in another, okay, that's yeah, a good fills gap. in another okay. blank. Yeah. And then yeah. in my summers and when I was at McGill, my final summer, I had a, I already had a job at CABC and I was like, you know what? I want to go get my hands dirty. I think this is just like innate, like something I just wanted to do. Worked in a farm in Alberta, um, cattle, sheep and goat farm. And then I also came back and I worked in a pork abattoir in Toronto. I know. Okay. I know. So you, like, you got a making, job at CIBC, <laughs> and you and you decided before I go and do a banking job, I'm gonna go work on a farm. Yeah, exactly. So I looked at an online Saskatchewan newspaper, and then it was an ad in Alberta. So I went to Silver Valley. <laughs> I love find, you I'm already, man. The, I love you too. I'm trying to find the logic <laughs> in any of what you're doing. <laughs> There's no, my 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 life is not linear. Um, Apparently. No, we love it. We we That's love awesome. that. We, not linear Thanks, is is uh is great. It's great. So okay, so <laughs> okay, so you, you got so you got some Loblaws experience that helps um, with some of this. You... What is your Loblaws? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I'm just curious for a second before we go. You were in the head office. You were in the stores. Where were you in Loblaws? Oh no, stores. I was cashier and stock boy. 
Okay, so you you physically were you were stocking shelves. You got to see stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah, mainly cashier and like uh, like yeah, like cashier stock and okay. Yeah, customer service. Okay. 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 So you you've Makes got a little more sense. you've got some uh, ground level retail experience. You've got um, some of the ministry stuff that might fill in some of the gaps on processes and things you might be able to do. You <laughs> you've got some farming experience. Um, Okay, and then so sorry, and then I might I might have missed this. The snack, is this um, is is it something like your your mom made? Like, is this a family kind of thing that you grew up with and and figured out, or or just something you guys kind of started making, or your mom started making, or yeah, no, did... it, it it was like in her family, in my family, through it, like since I can remember. Okay, and then. I started bringing it to university actually my friends were like oh this is so bomb but nothing really came out of it yeah and like fast forward and then i was like oh there's like you know it's it's vegan you know natural product natural snack food and all that jazz like you know kind yeah. of going with the, it's the right and, time for it for sure yeah and yeah i mean disruptive flavor i mean there's nothing out there that tastes like it and it's highly addictive i mean based on our proprietary is it a southeast asian kind of flavor profile or is it yeah. an african food? what is it like where are we from it's like it's like indian it's like Indian. Okay. Yeah. okay. But it's interesting. There's a, I mean, I can't really disclose a spice, but there's a spice in it. You don't it. have to. No, no, please don't. You don't have to. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah. yeah, share what you don't need to share. But it's like, I mean, that mixed with when it marinates with my seasoning. Yeah. With the other seasoning, it, it creates this like, uh, you just want, it's like, it's like, um, Miss Vic, it's like you just want to eat more and more and more. Right. So. so you put cocaine in it. I got it. Exactly. Good job. I understand. That's good. That's good. Make sure the margins are there. <laughs> Interesting. So, that's, so this, so this is, a, is it distinctly again? Because we don't want to get into it, like a distinctly East Indian or Indian flavoring type of play. Like if I smelt it, I'm thinking, oh man, this smells like what I would think. It smell, yeah, you know what I mean? So, I mean, great question, Kenny. It's so I did. Um, it was very Indian at first. I, a lot of people knew off the bat when I was bringing it in. Um, okay. but I did about like eight to nine variations of it kind of westernize it a bit okay a bit, fluffier, a bit more flavorful a bit more okay. bold and then mm -hmm. people okay. didn't know i guess like maybe you know i had like 450 customers over the course of five months and i i would say like one or two maybe like i mean i dealt with maybe 100 150 direct customers maybe a few were like oh where is this is this like an ethnic snack but i think people were just puzzled like wow this is so flavorful what's the flavor interesting yeah, so I mean, um, you know, as much as I want to hone it's being Indian, I want it also just to be more of like a millennial. Like, I mean, it doesn't just, have to be. It doesn't have to raise your faith. It's more because at my age, I ask questions like that. I know we're not allowed to anymore, no, but no. I, don't, I don't care. So <laughs> I just go down those paths. But I'm curious because I like, I like, the, I like the ethnicity in food. I like to know where food comes from because I get a whole different. Like when I'm eating, I like the visual. I can see things then. And I, I get the feel for what it is. So I, I have no issue with being whatever it's from, but right. it just looks very interesting. And the flavor profile sounds pretty cool then. Yeah, there's the original and then there's also like a spice. There's two skews that are coming out. And then the spicy one is a huge hit. Like it was actually a bigger hit than the original. Really? Um, yeah, I can see that. Okay. I love spice. I can see that. Yeah. Spice, yeah, spice, spice is on the way up, right? Like quality spice. We, in the Western okay. world, we, you know, we've, we've done, it's funny, um, with like we, we talked a lot a lot about this with Neil's real deals right like the sauces but like we're used to kind of that vinegary saucy you know kind of in your mouth heat but I think I think the Western world's starting to get really used to like Asian heat which is a whole different it's a whole like, different heat you know, yeah it's a whole different heat whole right different but heat. but it's it's just fantastic so um, that makes sense to me as well yeah interesting. Yep. So, okay, so so you start, so you brought this thing to university and then you started bringing it to work in sandwich bags. You start to get some traction and you think, I gotta do something with this. And then, so so what do you do? You you go, you're making it, do you make it at home and start packaging it in kind of like um, semi-finished product bags or, or how, how do you walk yeah, into mean, the evolution of that? For sure, like, I mean, there's, uh... If you go to, 
I mean, I'm not sure if you guys have access to the internet, but if you go to umibrands.ca. I'm actually on the web page yep. now. I'm looking at the podcast. Okay, so if you go to About Us or where is yeah, it? I was just there. I don't know where it is, but um, which tab? Oh, yeah. If you go to, if you go to. Uh, yeah. About uh, Us. Oh, sorry, you've, you've got order. those brown bags there, right? Yeah, craft paper bags. So okay. I was going to a commercial kitchen downtown Toronto. Oh, I see. Making about 80, 90 bags a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was ordering craft paper bags from Amazon and then mm-hmm. going to a local printer shop. And I mean, mm-hmm. I cogs right stupid high, but I mean, this was just more of an experiment run, right? Mm-hmm. Of course. So you were um, trying to more to establish a, a, one, a desire and two, I guess, a retail to figure out yep. what this sh- should retail at. So and then work backwards, I would assume. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, and like I had all these like results to date, like, as I mentioned, there is some interest from a lot of interest from breweries. Uh, well, I can see this in a bar for sure. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, like, I would pitch you with beer. This is like killer. Actually the brewery got a, I think they got a bit upset that I didn't have any in stock. They're like, dude, this is like the fastest selling snack in history. Like you can't just like let us hang. I'm like, sorry, man, I have a full-time job, a baby. And I, I just focusing on growth right now. So I forget that man, get your shit together. Build, That's build the marketing the piece. You have to say, this is a limited run product. Yeah, this is right. This is, like this I've is made. Fair, man. I don't mass craft produce made in limited run. Yeah, absolutely. So you want it? You figure it out. You forecast it right, and I'll bring it to you. But yeah, you want you ten know. kilos? I'll make you ten kilos. But I make two at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I right? mean, look, you guys are the experts. No, I mean, I would. No, I would oh, yeah. Put, yeah. Absolutely. Let that. You know yeah. what? If they want it, order it. How, what's the shelf life? Um. So in these bags, it's like maybe four months but like um at scale it'll be about nine months right well they can, they can order a month worth of, of snack or two weeks worth of snack whatever yeah. it's not a day-to-day you know you're not a day-to-day service yeah 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 so wow, are these okay. baked how do you do these things yeah no so they're, they're quickly fried um okay. i tried to air fry it i tried to bake it uh, i put it in a real fryer this honestly time. i tried every. <laughs> Well, I'll start screwing around with other things. I, I, okay, I can feel your heart clogging up already. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Got to air fry it. Kenny, life. listen, Kenny wants it really hard fried, and then he wants it as salty as you can possibly Absolutely. make it. It's a snack. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know what? To cover my to cover my bases, I actually did try and bake it, air fry it, and broil. I think I've tried to broil it too. Nah. And it all tastes like crap. It didn't. It didn't marinate like the seasoning. Nah, the seasonings don't get in. You need that. You need yeah. the, the 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 oils and stuff yeah, to yeah. to work yeah. with it. It brings out a whole new level, right? Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not getting hungry now too. You know, that's the problem. Um, you're out of luck, sodium, man. Sodium levels if, not if that If I buy bad five bags, I can get free delivery in Toronto. I gotta Sorry, buy Kenny. a pallet. <laughs> Sorry, Kenny. I'll that's ship you a in BC. So where where are Sasha? Where are you right now? So okay, we went from you went. Let, let's, uh, so we went into like Ziploc baggies. Yep. You were giving away in the office. Then you yep. figured, well, shit, you know what I'm making? I may as well turn a buck. Mm-hmm. I may as well cover costs. So you started charging people in the office a nominal fee or just to cover costs. I'm assuming or yeah, you- I mean, it was like full Ziploc, no weight, like whatever I can like zip up for five bucks. Whatever. Oh, okay, so uh, maybe covering costs, maybe not. Yeah, you know what? Probably until like. May, probably not like i mean okay. i probably lost a couple hundred bucks over the course mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. but whatever it's, it's pennies like in the long run right like yeah, yeah. you got market research right? yeah you got market research totally yeah. so yeah. For, it was for peanuts really wow. so then you go into there and you figure okay if i get bags i can go to a small scale like industrial kitchen where you're like bc would be like your food safe and you got mm-hmm. those things taken care of so you're not doing anything wonky and you're yep. making now, you were saying 50 to 90 bags a week or a day? I can't remember what you said. No, uh, like a week because um, in, on a given day, so I'd go on Saturday mornings um, and then I would be in the kitchen for four hours because I would get drained, right? Because I'm like, uh, do, like I so much work. And then, um, right, right, right. And then like, yeah, I'd, I'd like during the summers too, I'd be like, I mean, I'd be so dehydrated. I would have to like, I would almost faint. It was, a uh, I guess so, right. And that was when the trial run was happening. It was April. April to September of this. Of okay. So you did that. Then you decide what now you're, you're, you've already scaled the production a little bit or you're still thinking like, where are you, where are you going? Yeah, no, so I, I just wanted to get feedback. Honestly, I just want to say, is this viable? I, I don't want to waste my time and money down the road. Mm-hmm. And then I had people, I mean, go to customer reviews. I mean, I had people from not only customers, but I had, um, I started shipping it out to distributors, brokers, um 
founders of CPG folks who now who have in, oh, f- like phenomenal like reviews. Like, I mean, I have like three, four distributors who want to go on board now. I'm speaking with a few top brokers who I'm, I think one I'm solidifying. Um, wow. A few, a few founders who, um, who run 100 million plus CPG brands that I'm, you know, who have the intent to join my advisory board. So there's like, you know, I, I, I think I just wanted to see how it was going to go. And then, yeah. Um, yeah. And then concurrently I was looking at, I found a co-packer in Scarborough that can make it. I like, it's very, food, rice and chickpea is very um, tough. A lot of potato chip guys and um, corn guys could not make this. Like they, I mean, I did a trial one trial run on one of them. It wouldn't do, but anyways, these, these guys out in uh, Scarborough, they, they can do it like 3000 kilos a day, about 25,000 bags. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, I was kind of doing all that stuff in, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, like I just wanted to see if it was like, I mean, yeah, yeah. And like, there, it sounds like you're there. Like, it sounds like you're pretty sure that this is, there's a play in this, right? For sure. And you're 50 gram bags or a hundred gram bags, pardon me. And what, what is that in terms of retail? Like, what, what are we talking on this? So, I mean, I've completely rebranded. I'll, I'll send you guys an email after it's, it's completely rebranded by the customer, like testimonials. It's more like of a, like a liquid death meets like Doritos type of like branding. It's like, I fucking, cr- sorry. Pardon my language. Like, oh, did you just I, swear on the show? Like I have never I mean, heard that. What I the fuck, shocked. Sasha? What the fuck? Like, watch your fucking language. Like, seriously. I know. I don't know why I said that because I know you guys swear. So I was like, you know. Um, <laughs> we just said, made you try to try and make it feel better. We don't, we don't care. <laughs> but I mean, I, I thought it was wholesome at first. And when you see the branding, but people were like, I mean, read the, some of the reviews are like, primo shit, man. Already half a bag down. Um, so all the dope smokers like is what you're really getting at. Yeah, exactly. That's okay, that's all good too. That's good. So, that's a good market. so it's marinated with cocaine, and the dope smokers like it. I, yeah. I'm good here. Like this is yeah, this is this great. Is a, this is a this is a killer product. This is it. So let me like, go back. 100 grams. What do you? What's the retail? Give, just give, so I want to go on price for a second. Yeah. So 120. It's going to be 120 grams. 120. 499. And you've got you've got the ability to do that. So I figured out all my gross, like I've literally figured out all my um like cogs and everything, like 3PL. Um uh what else was there? Like trade spend. Like I I've I've worked with like you've, some you've backed it all so you've backed it all backed it all up. Yep. Interesting. And people, people are like, I mean, yeah, people, I mean, look, that's okay. that's I mean, like Doritos, Doritos are like three bucks for two hundred and fifty grams or something like that. Yeah, but it's mass produced shit, right? No, no, yeah, but that's where I, I'm going like with Doritos it, right? Too, is, is yeah, at one twenty five for five bucks, no. like this is an artisan product in a decent price range. Yeah, I don't that think that's kind of puts at all. you, you know, because I think like if you go with potato chip guys, like Hard Bites or one of these guys, aren't they kind of in that same? Well, even do Hawkins, like what's Cheesy's at? Yeah, like, um... but you know what? I think, I mean, I think this is going to be the. I'm hoping to work with my broker comp- company, but like, you know, it com- it's comparative in terms of price with all the natural health food products. Yeah. Well, that's where I was going with it too. But, it's, you know, it's but good. some people are like, oh, are you going to put it next to Doritos? Cause I'd buy it off there. And like, because it has that feel like, pe- but I'm like, no, it's not. Cause it's. You'll never sell it. You'll never well, sell you're, it. Right? You're, First the, off, you're, you're, you're the Doritos of the natural. Yeah. So you're going to be battling really... Frito and, and old Dutch. You're not going to get real estate. They're no, going to knock the shit out of you. So don't bother. Right. You don't need to be there. Right. And just be careful. Like, again, you, you've established if the price works at four ninety nine, that's the price. So yep. you're you're a little bit like so. So a hard bite, which is still a potato. I think it's a potato. Yeah. Hard bites is potato base, but they're somehow in the natural set. They're they're two ninety seven for one hundred and twenty five grams. So at, at you and, know, and so, so at potato. three bucks, you know, that's for a potato. Right. So. So yeah, at you're five bucks, you're, it's, it's not a significant premium. Like no, no one's going to go, what no. the, I'm not buying that. Right. No, no, like no, 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 it's, it's going to be, I understand. Right. Like, I mean, I understand look at, why it's a little bit more. Nine grams of fiber, even five, 50, five grams of protein. Like actually you got to play here, man. Yeah. We actually, we actually rejig the thing. It's uh, actually, it's um now it's going to be five grams of protein, three grams of fiber, but it right. also has omega three and six polyunsaturated fats and a source of iron. So like, we're kind of highlighting those. Right elements okay. um no, which that's, that's the okay. pitch is there it's it's fine no this right? is not like this is not this is not complicated yeah. per se yeah i mean it's a tough it's it's snacks is a tough set just yeah. because you're battling a couple big guys and then you're battling a shit ton of little guys 
So you, you, it's kind of one of those weird spots where you're not just battling two or three majors that just want to kick the hell out of you. You're also, you know, there's a lot of people in, in these cool little sets. So you're trying to knock some play out of them as well. But you know I do what? like the look of your product. Like the taste sounds Honestly, phenomenal. I'm, so I think one thing I was like, you know what, let's see the market, how it did. And the other thing going with it, which people said was, like, other than like a Frito lookalike, I mean, I'm not your next Tostito. I'm not your next crisp. Like, I'm not your next. Like, no, 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 no. You're totally crisp. down that, the other side. Oh, no, no. Potato chip. Like, the way to extrude this and make it is it's so different. It's either I go big or go home with this, you know, like mm-hmm. type of thing. Well, you mm-hmm. can tell it's extruded, right? Because um, it looks like it's ribboned, ribboned out yeah. almost, right? So it's just kind of neat too. So yeah, where are you right now yeah. in terms of retail? Sorry. For yeah, that. that's okay. Like, are you in any stores? Like, are you in like a Longos or? No, no. Or- I, I mean, I didn't want to like, I didn't, I mean, a, I didn't have the funds to like go big, but I didn't want to, I wanted to make sure I had a finished, like, like I wasn't sure Product. where the branding was at. Like it was more yeah. just like a test run. Right. So yeah. I, yeah. branding's all like, I mean, new packages and just done and all that, but we are, um, we're testing our, we're doing a test run at the co-packer in terms of like the bags. And then we look to hit the green button um, or the gas pedal on uh, right. hopefully in the next few weeks and then have product ready for end of February. You, But you, you've got some interesting plays here where I don't know. I don't think the commercial guys have the same thing, right? Like this, like the bars, for example, to be able to get like that's that's there's some tonnage there that could earn you. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, so you've got a food service play. Um, that, I'd like that a lot, to be honest. Like not you. a lot of these guys have, right? Like, no. cause the thing about retail is like the set you're going into, I'd almost call it murderous, like murderous, right? Like it's competitive to the max. That's like right. That's, this yeah. is one of these categories where like Pepsi still has people going into stores where, you know, the rest of CPG has cacked all of their salespeople. Pepsi, like they still count wins by facings, right? In this category, like Buddy, they still fill two, three know. times a week. They're not in. Yeah, yeah, no, centers. no, and and these it's guys, like, they go model. in, they fill, and they count. And so, like, Frito Lay will count wins based on the number of facings Absolutely. they have at a local Longos, right? So, yep. like, to have the food service side, like this bar, who's like, come on, you can't leave us hydrate. Fine, like, but order. A couple of hundred kilos for me, right? Like you're gonna I blow love through it. Service side, man. You know what I mean? Like, like, like five guys instead of having peanut shells all over the floor, man. Like you, you could fill this by the barrel and, or boring and like people still, would like, chew seriously. right through it. Like, yeah, you do yeah, like yeah. You do five kilo, ten kilo bags. It's not do anything mental. Yeah, like, yeah honestly, yeah. you do you do stuff like that. Like to me, because the cost structure is different, I'd be it's all tonnage, food man. service because like, yeah. you could just produce us a mile yeah. a minute, put it in. Yeah, I mean, you can still do nice bags, but do like a do a, a 500 gram a kilo bag and strictly for food service, you save a ton on packaging, a ton mm-hmm. on marketing. Um, I mean, honestly, I mean, well, who cares? I mean, the retail side's fun, but retail is not cheap, right? It's costly. Like, it's, you're it's a, weeks it's away from game. launching, so we're, we're not obviously. No, no, do it. No, I mean, it's a good know, idea. Do it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But no, I mean, actually, yeah. there's a few other things actually we, um, I mean, food service is actually on my whiteboard right here because it's something I've been reading. There is a company called, I think, I'm not sure if it's, it's one of these Mexican companies. They had a, like a million or 10 million in sales before in food service before they went retail and they already established a customer base. There's a lot of people that do that. There's a lot of, a lot of the stuff we eat. Like if you look at pastas, for example, because it's easy because I'm Italian, but if you look at the pastas you see on shelves and you go to shelves and say, wow, I've never seen that pasta before. Yeah, you have. You've had two years in the restaurant. Yeah, you, you've been eating. That's it. why you, you have, it. that's why yeah. it's on the shelf. Yeah. It's all test run yeah. there. And the cost structure is different because even for the manufacturer of pasta, they can go into five kilo bags bulk yeah. as opposed to 10 individual yeah. 500 grammers, right? The cost structure changes. And, and then everything else changes. There's no listing fees. There's no co-op. There's no uh, all the bullshit that that just attaches to retail. As fun as retail is, it's 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 a it's a shitty game in a lot of ways. It's a lot of fun. But it's a lot of work. Well, you you look. You at, got a very cool proper bars. Yeah. Every bar in the country yeah, yeah. should have this. I know. I mean, I mean, there's also a a few smaller distributors um, that had interest, like who have hotels, offices, and stuff. And well, awesome. And, I mean, I have, I'm kind of office space. I don't know so much. I'm not, I don't know about that, but like anything light food service definitively. So any cafe, any bar, 
could do this in a heartbeat. Yeah. I, you know, put it this way. If you put this on the table, what's the difference between putting a side of guacamole and chips that let's say they make on site, they charge me $5 or give me a bowl of these for $5. It's, it's munchy food. You yep. know what it forces me to do? I'm going to buy more beer realistically, right? That's what's yeah, going to happen. It's salty. Yeah. It's nice. Who it's tasty. Like savory? I mean, seriously. Throw it with some guacamole. Whatever. Or whatever. If there's a whatever. Different, Salsa doesn't matter. On its Straight own. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the food service plays very, very cool. And I think there's definitely play in that side for sure. A lot oh, easier. That's exciting. Too, in some ways. Okay, so, really so you're cool, launching man. shortly. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, not to deflate retail. retail. We don't want to do that. Yeah, we don't want to deflate no, dude, no, you know what? The whole retail side too is I've been, again, I, I took like a really like what? I took, while I was doing this whole experiment, I was reading and listening to podcasts and um, um, yeah, essentially, the, and like speaking to founders, and I think one advantage I have in the in the savory snack industry is I'm actually getting these 35 gram samples done for me. So it's sealed. I can hand them on the streets of Toronto. I've called the city. So literally I have a 95, like almost like 100% customer repeat rate, not just through friends and family. When it's in it their hands. It is cocaine. That is the it special is. I swear to God, it's, it's like, you know, honestly, you'll have, yeah. it's, I mean. Yeah, it is laced. People say like. Fuck, I, I just want to find this one. You know, you got to be, it, and watch, I'll tell you what, like, yeah, I love your sampling idea, by the way, but a oh. 35 gram is a pretty hefty sample, mm -hmm. right? And it's, and again, there's costs involved right now. You got packaging costs. You've got a you lot of things in there. You Sample through the bars. Kenny, you know what though? If I would rather spend three grand on, let's just say hypothetically, like 5,000 bag, I don't, like, I don't yeah. know, what, but 5,000 bags. It's going to be in there. People's mouths. Then five thousand dollars on, I I'm, when I'm starting out, then five thousand dollars on Facebook ads or something, right? Like, Buddy, I would spend five thousand dollars giving it to every bar in the goddamn city. Yeah, I'm I mean, serious because you know what? To what your point, it's sound. No, no, you you, you, you gotta taste it. it. Like you, you you're gonna buy it if you taste it. So I don't I don't need a booth in Lobos. I literally can handle like as long as I'm on someone's private property, I can I can go on any street in Toronto, very dense city, or anywhere in the freaking Ontario and just Absolutely. like hang it out. And, you know, I'll have a Poco shirt, a Poco cape, and I'll just go, you know, be Superman. Like, I mean, well, I, just I, I can, like, I can seriously see this in so um, many cafes and bars. It would just be, it would just be, it would just be mental. And it's, you know, it's, pretty, it's, I mean, you know, early right? stages. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's worked so far. I love to get in people's mouths and like, be like, holy shit, get me more. And like, I've, that's how I have so many, that's how I had a successful trial run is, through three and four degrees of separation through like, you know, my brother's friends, mom's aunt or some shit. Like right. it was crazy. Like the craziest one was like my friends, my, fr I actually got a, I was in a company care package for a federal agency. My friend works for it. And she sent 190 bags nationally. And I had people from Quebec and Alberta calling me like, Hey, we're going to get it. Oh my God. That's man. awesome. So like, it's kind of cool. It's led to so many different things. And no, uh, that's really cool. But you know what? Exciting. One, one podcast that you guys have, one episode, you guys said, you know, don't go to like farmers markets for like three years. Get that proof of concept, see if it's viable, and then like hit the gas running, right? Like, I didn't want to keep doing this like for, you know, I mean, I didn't have the time. And I was like, you know what? I think a six month trial was good. And these are like, I think you did a lot of things right. I mean, you've got trial, you know, it works. I mean, really, a salty snap, you're pretty much a good thing to go. Your challenge is what most people don't do is learn enough about the industry because the salty snack aspect yeah. is very cool and it's easy in some in yeah. a lot of ways I'm not saying your product's easy no, no but for sure. it's it's the difficulty is when you start scaling production and you're buying bags and then you think well i'll go to retail well the retailer's got 14 trillion options yep. in salty snack so now you know that's a, that's that's a bitch now the fact is you know that people like it you've got the trial and you've got some cool angles um, that retail could almost be um, uh, well, either a gonna, secondary or yeah. it could work side by each with food service, which most CPG brands, as you know, Phil, don't get that opportunity. Well, they're they're going to, in a lot of ways, it's what you want because it drives a demand that the retailer can't turn away. You have no choice. Right? I, because, I have these chips. Are you going to yeah. bring them in or not? Otherwise, like, I'm going like to go with a Like potato chips, it's carry. like, look, you know, can you tell between Old Dutch and Humpty Dumpty and – you know, lays and you, you maybe kind of sort of could, but the retailer can persuade you to go from one to the other. Right. But once they've tried your snack, it's, a tougher it's not one. something that they can go, ah, well, you know, I'll we got something else like that here. Oh, 
Or the okay. Fritos. I'll what, what, no, <laughs> what do you have that's like this in the yeah. store, right? No, I, I don't want Doritos, and I, I don't want, you know. So what yeah. else is there, right? Like, why, why don't you have these guys, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, and like, and like, I, you know, speaking of founders too, like, I got the product in like six or seven buyers' hands or in, in their mouths, like some distributors and brokers, and like, truthfully, the consensus was, wow, when is this coming out? So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I. I I, I don't like to force things. I don't like to say, Oh, do you like my snack? It's like, you know, what was the feedback? And I mean, it's been, I mean, truthfully, it's been like incredible. So I'm like, you know what, maybe this is worthwhile, you know? So like, we'll see how it goes. And I just, I just, just make sure your margins are fat. Yeah. Like yeah. make sure you've given yourself a ton of room, right? Because it's, it's going to be important because in these categories, you know, you're well, probably working closer to 50 margins with retailers. Which means that five dollars is two fifty to them, right? And then they're still going to want their 10, mm -hmm. 15 points in, in mm -hmm. the program and whatever else they decide to screw you on, right? So, but, and then the distributor is going to want thirty-five to forty points. Brokers want five to ten. Like before you know, it, you start chewing up pretty fast, right? Right. And I think, I mean, that's why I'm trying to get like, uh, I mean, hopefully soon is my team assembled to negotiate those. I mean they'll have more negotiating power with retail and let's just say like I get a top like broker and they're able to maybe, you know, no, you don't think Small there's, retailers no, there's, for there's, sure. no, there's no negotiating power with, you know, a broker and a distributor and it depends on who it, 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 they can live with each other. So they can negotiate all day when they hit law of laws, there's not going to be a shit ton of negotiating done. Right. Okay. Like if the listing fee is 35 grand, it's 35 grand. What if I told them I worked four years during my high school years? Congratulations. I did too. That's I'm sorry. That's, realistically what who cares yeah right no oh, the yeah. fact is i might you know when i was a buyer in phil's bar i liked a lot of products and i liked the person selling but i also worked for a company that was massively entrepreneurial um very um lenient with us to do whatever we wanted it was super easy to work with london drugs as a buyer because you could pretty much do whatever you want right a lot of companies don't have that flexibility mm -hmm. especially in these types of sets because it is so freaking competitive. And that's why I think that's why we're probably both not hesitating, but we keep going down sort of the food service path, because if you can develop this brand in those spaces and someone goes into a bar and they order, you know, can I have um, two cores light? And can I have uh, the, the, you know, Sasha's snacks, all of a sudden that's, I'm going, you know, cause I'm paying for it. I'm going to pay $5 for this, for Poco. I'm going to pay for it. Right. right. So if I say I want five dollars for Poco in a bar, why wouldn't I not pay for it in the store? I mean, right. it's, it's easy in the store. It's just tough because there's so much noise. There's so many guys in a salty snack. So I, know, I, I love this. I work for a retailer that was small in the beginning, allowed us to do a lot of things. But I know I have a lot of leeway on profit and what I had to return to the bank for the retailer. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I think that's where your problem is, is. If, if I'm a, if I'm a clever buyer and I've saved up a bit of profit, you know, because I've, I've been hitting the, the big guys hard and I've got a little bit of extra leeway, I can buy you a little bit of room, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to give you room on, you know, some of the like new brand stuff that I'd want you to do. Right. right? So I, I'd want you to be in a flyer. Right. And I might be able to cut you a tiny bit of space on margin, for example, because I'd say to you, don't worry about billing. I won't bill you back for the dollar if you go on sale or whatever. I could do that because maybe I, I uh, pounded a Pepsi or I pounded a, you know, like I was able to carve away a little bit of profit and you're small enough that I can absorb that. But I wouldn't be able to say. I can waive your listing fee. I could like those things are not like they're they're big ticket things that somehow I need to answer for internally um, that I wouldn't do you know what I mean like because my right. my risk is already I don't know you from anybody right. you seem like a good dude you seem like you have a good snack but inherently buyers are skeptical people right like we you know at the end of the day we take risks because they're you were seventy percent sure right um, that they're gonna be good but. There's the 30 that I'm. <laughs> and the 30 comes in. You know, I mean, the 30 comes in for 100%. Like it's 70 30, right? So 
I don't want you to be in the 30, but I'm not going to take enough risk that the 30 is going to hurt me a lot, right? Now that's so also that's, us talking that's what you're, returns. you know, that's what you're dealing with from a buyer persona, right? Is but now you can go to independent still, Phil, right? Yes, different game. So if yeah. you go to the one store, two store, three store, even like a three store chain, like the little guys, like Longles isn't so little anymore. But if you can, you can do, and there are in Ontario, there's tons of distributors. Yeah, but there are distributors who do DSD really well. Yeah. Or smaller independents yep. or natural stores, much better. And you've got leeway there. And that's all. And then you can they play will, and you can have some fun. Because they because they want to be early in the game. Absolutely. They want to be the chance. people that said, you know what, Loblaws, Loblaws was being kind of the conservative biatch in this, and we beat them to the game. Like you found this here first. You know what I mean? Like right. those things are badges of honor for a lot of these guys, right? So you you do have room to play there. And then if you do get that, you do get a little bit more room or you get a little more respect from someone like a law of loss. Plus you might right? get a little more margin um, for yourself where you yeah. can actually do other things. Yeah. yeah. Right. There's right? Yeah. I, I know there's a distributor like um in Toronto Annex, and they I know they cater to more of the independent stores. Um there's, there's also nothing wrong with that. The independent no, side is good business. For sure. It's I mean, I'll take what I get. Um well, and don't there's... even do it that way though, Sasha. Like I you take what you get for sure. But you're in a good spot right now. You can actually plan this really mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you can say mm -hmm. to yourself, listen, the allure and brokers and distributors will do this with you all the time. The allure of the law of laws listing and the Sobeys listing is really enticing. Obviously, you'd be stupid not to want to, want to do that. I get it. But there's a lot of complications that go with those listings, right? And it's really no different than what you're doing now. Your independents are the office, your mom and dad. Your, your cousins, your aunts, that, that market that you've sort of established. Do you know what I mean? It's, right. just, it's just a different scale. They, they have hundreds of people going through their stores every day. There's a market there. Not everybody likes shopping in a Loblaws. Not everybody likes Walmart. Not everybody likes Sobeys. And to tell you the truth, if I'm looking for innovative products, I will not go to those fucking clowns because they have nothing. They don't right. buy that way. I don't give a shit what the distributor is. <laughs> if your distributor broke down, they're full of shit. That's not how those guys buy. They, right. they don't. They're not the innovators. They'll innovate on their own brands. They're not innovating for you. They'll pick up a few here and there. But the independent, that guy or that girl, that's the one who's trying different mm -hmm. shit. They're right. the ones who get excited about something like this and say, you know what? I think I can actually go $5.99 on this thing and I'll do a front end or whatever they'll want to do. Or they'll go $4.99 and work on 35 margin, right? which pads your pocket, yeah. right? There's a, there's a whole different world. And you've already done it anyway. Like you've started that way. Like if you think of the, the office people and your family and the friends as sort of the independents, it's the same idea because sometimes the big guys are, they're, they're, the allure is immense and it's so cool, but man, that's you know what? problematic. You know what? I, I'm, I'm risk averse in that sense where I don't want to make a big mistake and go there and get delisted. And then it's like a problem. Like I, I'm, I'm actually like more, I tread lightly and I've been doing everything slowly um, or slow, like, you know, not too slow, but slow yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. I want to, I mean, you know, people ask, or, you know, even some distribution distribution people I've been speaking with, like, oh, like, how quick do you want to go national? I'm like, not quick. I don't. I, I, don't. I, I would rather. Not at any cost, right? Yeah, yeah. not at anything. I don't really care. Yeah. I can, I, you could stay in the GTA. Yeah. And I mean, do a it's, wicked it's so business for the rest of your life. Yeah. You could stay in, like, you, I don't know where you live, but if you're staying in Mississauga, how many people in Mississauga, Phil? Half mil? Yeah. Well, you could stay in Mississauga and never leave. And yeah, quite frankly, it's carve, carve out a really good life. Yeah. Right. Seriously. I mean, it depends on what you really want to do and how you how you manage this. And you, you have to do that to so it. I I can have something over Kenny. Is that yeah. I can buy the snack and he can't. That's, that's, that's what I want. That's all you care about. It just you're so self centered. That looks <laughs> really terrible. It's just not very nice. Although you do send me stuff periodically, but you are. Just I very, do. I do. I do. I don't know about you. Some days. I I I think you've you've. It sounds like, like you're you're in the right place though. You've you've clearly thought about this a lot. You've, I'm impressed with what you think. Uh, I mean, you're, yeah, you're, you're doing this. Yeah. You've, I think you've done this really well. There's a lot of people that would have done it faster. I get that. There's a lot of people that would you know would have done it. Whatever. I think you've done it really. You've done yeah, it for you. You've been really and you've thoughtful. thought this through. It's thoughtful. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. It's you've done this. I think well. I don't think there's any issue yeah. to this. I would just look at a few different angles. I agree. Maybe that you might not have. Because it also depends who you're talking to, mm -hmm. right? You, you you hang up on this call and you go talk to a distributor broker. You know what they're going to say? Those guys are fucking idiots. I want to listen to anything they say. We got to go to Loblaws and Costco. And you might want to do that. Light it up. I right. think there's play in it. It's a lot. Again, it's just a little more complicated game. Yeah. Just if just you do careful. that, 
if you do that, make sure the broker gets you across the true cost of getting. So the getting into a law laws and I mean, a Costco all the hidden costs. is amazing, but the it's not it's it's the um it's the after effect of getting listed, right? Um, yes. we we've had a bunch of like people that we know that have started that landed. Uh, the the best one, honestly, I I know probably three vendors that landed at Costco that had helped them like kind of like walk back a little bit of the offer because they basically landed in every Loblaws corporate store and then um, like the Fortinos uh, you know lineup or whatever. So some somewhere to the tune of like 300 to 400 stores. And so when we started working out things like pipe fill, um, you know, so you got to put you know six bags. Uh, two facings of each flavor so that's you know that's 12 you know like 12 bags of each uh, 12 bags of your product in every 300 stores plus the pallet in the warehouse plus plus and then they they would go holy shit like that's gonna be a three hundred thousand dollar you know kind of investment on my part yep yeah, well, that's and then you you've got to pay the listing fee, so you got two fees, so that's that's another sixty thousand dollars, and then um, and then you know, yeah, <laughs> there's there's like the investments that you're gonna make on on the marketing side with these guys, but but the three hundred grand, you you don't see cash for that for you know one hundred and fifty hundred. I was gonna say you could days. you could be yeah you could be in a in a yeah. paper where it so, takes you so you got to carry half million dollars for one hundred and eighty days it's a lot until of money. you see hopefully all of it without deductions right like without the usual. Yeah, but Phil, you're never gonna like, sell it all. That's the point, right? That's the thing, it's, right? Yeah, so start with that, that hundred yeah. half mil, like you said. Yeah. You sell half. You're new. 60 to 90 days yeah by the time they stop fucking around with you because they know you've yeah. got no voice because what are you going to do oh your well, broker well, might have a good but, relationship but to be God fair her, let's say but... Loblaw says they 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 you know you're new but i really like you and i'm going to get you all the way through you still got to get through i mean you know you worked with Loblaws at the store level the, at the store level there's like four layers of administration right so yeah, to get your paycheck offices. done on time is is already a chore right so to get you set up in sap and blah 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 and blah 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 and you make your know, way I through all, all the finance groups you know i know all about red tape and bureaucracy yeah. Yeah. yes you work for government <laughs> yeah so it's okay so yeah so you understand <laughs> that right so remember that's so you, you got to carry it's your money you know, now, now yeah, it's yours. but you got to carry 300 grand Right. Right. It's kind of like and you can't that's the order the day time, of, right? right? You have to yeah. order your raw materials most likely 60 to 90 days. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those guys don't give you terms yeah. unless you really know them. And the best yeah. terms you probably get is 30 days. So you've paid for, like you're sitting on your cash for 60 days minimum before it sees production. Mm -hmm. Then it's mm -hmm. another month. Then yeah, it I... gets to a store. Then it's another two months. Like if you could be like Phil said, you could be up to five months sitting there thinking. Buddy, I got, I got, you know, I got a kid to feed. I got, I got sales, I got bills, but <laughs> I got sales. But I got no sales, money. but I got no cash. Like for sure, no, I, I, I yeah. like, I, I've actually like studied this like whole negative okay. working capital like okay. cycle. It's, it's, it's vicious, and like you need yeah. more money. I mean, the faster you grow, the more cash you need, and yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's brutal. And I, you know, I, I won't mention it on this, um, but I, there, I do have a team that is, uh, a, a financially that's a like or some financial folks that are aligned with my vision. So, I oh, mean, good. there's good. I mean, which, which is I'm good. Not, I'm not, re, I'm yeah. not, re, my, my wife would kill me. I can't remortgage the house for my kid. So no, or, no, but, please you also, don't. but you've got to be careful too. You don't want to, yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to get yourself where you've mortgaged so much of your idea that when the, when the piper says, Hey, it's time to pay the, you know, pay the band. Right. You got no money because you know what the, the other guy says, no problem. We'll take care of that. By the way, you're out. Cause that's what VC does, right? That's, that's the nature of, of, other people's money when you're using other people's money it's exactly that other people's money yep no totally i want it back i want it back well, let's just say they're on favorable terms but yeah i know it is but it's money yeah. remember remember you're how right. many families get together so well until someone passes and all 100%. of a sudden money can make the world a miserable freaking place for sure right? i mean absolutely i i don't want to be naive about that. that's absolutely. why i really like the way you're sort of doing it you've got a cool idea you're not going to have a ton of people i think running out and copying this tomorrow morning you've you've done it i mean you can rush it if you want but you've got a really cool play in here and you could probably hide in some of these channels if you just 
do it a little differently, right? So you could buy some time if you're worried about people copying it. Or so I'm gonna shoot uh, you a note after this. I'll, I'll buy some from you. I'll buy the five bags, get some free delivery, or I'll pick it up or whatever. I'd, yeah. I'd love to try it. I'm so curious. Now. I'm curious now too. I'm, I'm dying to try this yeah. stuff. I, I'm, I'm curious to see what, it, what it's yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. It's well, good thing got I got a bunch of sample bags, so I'll just ship it over. You're in BC, right, Kenny? Yeah, I'm in Vancouver. Oh. Yeah. I, I, yeah, seriously. I, yeah, I mean, and if you want, you know, if you want some offline help or if you if you're kind of not too sure just 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 yeah, just yeah. ping us yeah, I mean, yeah. or either of us i mean i i, I don't yeah. know i'll give you i'll tell you what i think you could do whatever you want it's your business yeah. Yeah. but if you want an outside thought that's probably not so um attached to anything per se for sure I do this I mean, with I, another company i have buddy just so you know so i got another company that we're in the same boat we're retail bag ready we have the bags we're retail ready we don't have the distribution i'm talking to some distributors right now we're looking at a broker structure as well, but we do a food service business. And the conversation I had last night with one of the main partners and with the, uh, another of the partners today, I said, you know what, guys, the low line fruit right now is fucking food service for us. I couldn't give a rat's ass where we sell the, the, the guts of this product, whether it's in a food service bag or it's in the retail bag. I want money to pay the, to pay the bills, to keep the lights on and put some money in the bank. To be honest, so, one thing... As a, you know what, that brewery in the West and that sold out five times in three months. I mean, not only- I'd be there five, every day, man. Just give them honestly, stuff. I, well, there's an organic garage there and people would go in and be like, hey, can I get at the organic garage? I'm like- Yes. They couldn't at the well, time. Well, you have to get them in there. You got to get- so you, you tell the garage, then, buddy, the guy next door is carrying it. Yeah. The bar yeah. has it. They're coming after the bar to you. But you know what's Make cool it. about that brewery too is that it led to um, like catering events. Like guys, like I was doing like- um. Someone ordered like 30 bags for a catering a catering event in Mississauga. And then it led to me meeting a guy who then introduced me to the Scotiabank guy for like MLB, NHL, and NBA flights. Cool. Imagine those guys eating it. And then it also led me to an actor eating a, who like who bought the whole like supply. So, I mean, fuck, look at food service. It, it opened more doors but, than anything. But ever. that's, I guess that's a yeah, that's point. A big and if deal. you look at food service. Yeah. When you're doing a catering event, you don't send 30 bags. You know what you send? You send a you send a 10 kilo bag. Yeah. One bag, one pack, and let them divvy it up and put it into the plates or the bowls or whatever they damn well please. What do you care? Right. That's their I mean, industry. Smart, That's their business. Yeah. And you save 30 bags. You save all that bullshit. Right. Now, again, not to say don't do retail. I don't think Phil and I have said, I mean, I just, because your product is already lent so well, yeah. You, you, I would play the shit out of food service. Like I seriously, we'd be downtown tomorrow. I'd go to the bar, load them up. I'd go over, talk to the manager of Grand Garage. So listen, do whatever you want. If it's not you, I'm going to find somebody within a 500 meters of this bar and this product's going in there. And for right. the short term, for three months, that's going to be the only place they can buy it. So when people come from the bar and come and can't buy the snack here, I'm telling the bar to send it to your competitor. So you decide what you want to do. But that's how this game's going to play. Right. And that's, that's it. Yeah, because you got both sides then. Yeah. I love this, Phil. I do. I think this is so cool. I love it. Yeah, I do too. Sasha, thank you for coming Sasha, on. Good on you, man. Thanks for, thanks for yeah. pinging us or reaching out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, absolutely. I, I mean, I hope, I mean, I look forward to coming on. I mean, I might ping you guys offline. I'll send you some samples, but I look forward. Uh, I don't know. I'd I'm, love I'm, to, I'd like to, I'd love to see yeah. you do it in six, eight months. Like, where's it at? Come for back sure. for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you're launching, send us some stuff. We'll we'll reshare whatever you do on social media yeah. as well. And then and then for sure come back on and tell us uh, tell us how things are going. You know, um, if we if can get anything, the just reach out the podcast yeah. audience to help any way or um, a lot of them uh, wind up, we find a lot of them wind up mirroring our purchases. So um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, we'll tell Great. them. Good job, yeah. buddy. All right. Awesome. Well, happy 2022. And uh, thank I'll you. Talk to you, guys you, too. you too. You too. Right. Great. Cheers. Thanks, Sasha. Okay, Phil, hang on. Yeah. Sasha, nice meeting you, man. Okay. Congrats. Take care, Good man. Job. Oh, cool. It, it is cool. cool. I mean, again, it's not, it's not, yeah. it's not, a, it's not, you know, we're not going to go to Mars on this one. It's not rocket science, but I, I think he's done a decent job thinking it through. I think his little test market approach. I love the food service angle on this map. I should not. Every bar. <laughs> I love the story of, of bringing this to work in, in sandwich bags. <laughs> I love the fact you bring it to work sandwich bags. Then what you start doing, <laughs> then you start charging it for it. Yeah. That's yeah, even yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. It's even better. It's, so I'll it's get you hooked on this stuff for yeah. free. He said he's a drug dealer. Yeah. That's what he is. It's amazing. It's beautiful.
to me. Love it. Love it. Good for him. I hope he does well. Yeah. 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 We'll put right. um, Sasha and Poco's uh, product links and website pages yeah. in the, in the notes. Um, and then just a reminder, public service announcement. If you haven't filled in the survey, the survey please. link will be down below. Yeah, please, please fill it in. We would love it. Okay. Um, you know, having Sasha on is really cool. Uh, a listener who's building a product and yeah. reached out to talk to us. I really is, like is that. Really that was, cool. I'm, I'm glad we, uh, I'm yeah. glad you reached out. Yeah. Neat. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, folks, thanks for listening. Thank you very much. As always. Appreciate um, it.